Welcome to the exciting, epic conclusion of Mischief Makers. Alright, but seriously, the story isn't actually that good. It's not going to have quite an epic ending, but... Welcome to part 9, anyway. Apparently the Justice Warriors no longer take orders from the Emperor. And they know that he's Leo. And Marina teleports out of nowhere to confront him. This is a bit of an odd battle. Basically, you're supposed to grab these target, or these words that float around and shake them and then throw them at the Emperor. Or they, that monolith that represents the Emperor somehow, but I'm waiting for something specifically here before we get started. Of course, I'm taking a lot of damage here. There it is. If you get dire, you shake that to get lucky. The word lucky, which spawns the gold gem, which I missed because I was being attacked, so... Well, it won't show up again, so I might as well just... Oh my god, this is not going well. Not sure why, but I think my health is actually cut off on my screen now. So I can't even tell if this is my last health bar or not. And sometimes it gets cut off when I crop the videos poorly in editing, but this time it's missing on my screen and I don't know why. Okay, grabbing the death ones don't help, they just give you blue gems. Yeah, I could be really close to death and I'm not even sure. I'm sure he's really close to death too. I mean too if I am really close to death, which I don't know. I'm just gonna act like I am. And be careful here. Yep, that's the last one. And his monolith breaks open. He's revealed to have the exact same voice as his brother. In the one small clip of voice acting he does. Cause they didn't just they didn't really bother to get a, another voice actor. And then he loses and says that's why he doesn't like justice. And he thought that Theo's goal was the same as his, even though Theo specifically tells him otherwise. And then he says his dream was to be destroyed by his brother, which makes even less sense. I mean, what kind of a dream is that? And Marina defeats him, and if he wanted to be thwarted by his brother, then why does he kidnap him and leave him tied up? And aside from that, why is the professor not tied up anymore right now, so he can take, take that blow instead of Marina? And then the professor says goodbye. But he was just faking. So the professor must be stronger than you would think from him getting kidnapped a lot because I mean, when Leo attacked Marina with an attack like that, she needed some special health machine to get back, back to fighting action, but the professor just shakes it off basically. Not to mention the professor gets thrown around by Marina a lot, but still. Anyway, that's pretty much the end of the actual conflict in this game. The final battle you'd think would be important to the conflict, but it doesn't really have any doesn't really have much relevance at all. It's basically the Justice Warriors who are not fighting at all for justice right here. Lunar just says, who cares about justice? So they're basically just fighting Marina in the final battle for the sheer fun of it. And 
Now granted it is kind of a fun battle, but I really think they could have done a better job making it seem important. And so they all transform their machines into different parts of this boss. And all three of them combine together. into one giant transformer style robot that walks out of the background and yeah now that my health bar is on the top I can see that I have definitely have roughly no health so if I was to succeed at beating him this time I would well never mind never mind because I'm dead right now anyway since this is the final battle, I don't mind spending the 100 red gems on the max power continue. There's no way I'm using all three life bars on this boss. He's not even that hard. His boss may be the second easiest boss in the game. It really isn't fitting for a final boss. Well, actually... Second easiest if you don't count the inner struggle, I think it was called, level, where you basically fight Leo. Because I really don't consider that Leo battle much of a fight. Anyway, basically to defeat him you have to grab this fist this rocket fist that he has and launch it back at him. I believe you'd need to do that three times if I'm right on that. That's just a guess though. And he goes to the background and shoots this laser around. It's really easy to dodge. You just go as far as you can into the corner. Basically, when you grab this, you want to hope he doesn't move out of the way, because if he does, there's not too much you can do about it. It's like sometimes he'll move out of the way as soon as you launch it at him, and sometimes he'll just stand there and let you hit him. Basically, the way this boss goes depends on how much the boss pities you, and lets decides to let you hit him. There's not that much else to it. If he wanted to dodge this attack every time, he would, but... Sometimes he just stands there and let you lets you hit him. I'm not sure why. Well, I mean, I said it was because of pity, but that's probably not actually it. I guess it's just to make the boss beatable for gameplay balance. I mean, if the boss actually dodged everything, then it would be kind of pointless and impossible to beat him. Like, he dodged that one fine, but... And I did not block that hit. Basically, when you see him go into the background, you might as well go right to the middle of the level, because he's going to use that attack eventually. And you might as well get it out of the way. And he dodged that time, too. This boss battle basically goes as long as he wants it to. Or as long as they want it to, because I guess they're... Kind of all three people at once. All three of the Justice Warriors. Let's try this again. That time he went right into it rather than dodging it. I don't even think I was aiming the, in the right area at first, but then he rocketed right into it. I'm not sure why the professor shows up here either. I mean, he was already rescued before.
But of course the professor gets thrown away as every time. And as you can tell from the title of the level, that is the final battle. So all we've got left is the ending, and there's one more level there, which is the credits. The ending goes on based on how, lo how many gold gems you have. You basically have to pay your gold gems you worked so hard to collect to watch the ending. The ending, you can't control the text in any way, so it goes pretty slow for my tastes, but... I guess it's just so anyone can read it. So she turns out to be the king's daughter. So she should now be the queen. There's not really too much to talk about in the ending, but... I mean, you can pretty much see what's going on. But there's no real reason to not talk during the ending either, because the dialogue isn't voice acted or anything. Got 38 gold gems left for the ending. Guess there will be a coronation ceremony. The game seems to lag a little bit in this part of the ending, where they're going through the warp star. It's like there are some points in the game where the game just gets slowed down a bit because it can't seem to handle everything. It's not too big of a deal, but at the same time it's something worth noting. And her brother was just a bodyguard from a different world. Though he looks like a Clancer, so I don't see why he shouldn't be from planet Clancer, but I guess there are Clancers on other planets too, or maybe just things that look like them. I don't know, maybe I'm overthinking things again. This part of the ending, you can stop him from attacking you, but only if you have, like, all the gold gems and all A ranks. Which I obviously don't have. I'm not sure if I'll be going for all the A ranks at all. With levels like seven Clancer kids blocking the way. I mean, I'm definitely going to try for all the gold gems, but those are going to be pretty challenging too with some of those bosses. And the 11 second 100 meter dash.
find it odd that they basically just have a house that's on a couple of missiles. It's like if they crash their house into something, they're dead. I don't see how strapping missiles on a house makes it safe to travel through space with either, but... That's just being too logical. This is a video game, after all. And it flies off into space and appears to just blow up. And that's the transition into the credits. I guess this must be some abridged version of the credits or something because the next level is the credits. In those credits I'll talk more about my thoughts of the game and the future plans, but in these credits they're not that long so I'll just hold off on that. And you're still spending your gold gems on these credits and there are some things that happen after them. Since I don't have all the gold gems, the credits, well not the credits, but probably the ending after the credits will be abruptly ended. Then in the bonus parts, I'll try to go back and get the gold gems, and then if I do manage to get them all, I'll show the ending over again in full. Though the more I think about planning to get all the gold gems, the more unlikely it seems to me that I'll be able to get them. I just don't have a lot of confidence in being able to do all those bosses without getting hit. And Geold shows up in the surprise ending. He's supposed to be dead, but apparently he's just some... Apparently he's just some magic wizard or something that has the power to transform these justice warriors into humans. I'm not sure how they became... Well, how they stopped being human in the first place, but... Geode's magical spells can transform them back to human in any case. The spell that goes hocus pocus, hocus pocus, slam. Seems like odd words for a spell to me, but... And we're on our last gold gem, so I'm not sure where exactly it's going to cut off, but it will be soon. down to zero. So you get to see Mirko's human form, which of course he thinks is beautiful because he thinks anything about him is that good, and the ending ends here with that amount of gold gems. And so we're moving on to the true credits. Basically, my overall thoughts of this game can be summed up in saying that it has really good and fun gameplay and a really, really bad story. I'm not usually one to criticize stories a lot because whether they're good or bad is really all an opinion, but I don't think you'll find too many people that think the story in this game is too good. As for my plans in future videos, I set up a few polls to gather votes on what kind of series I should do next after this one. And I think I'll probably be making some videos for Mario Superstar Baseball based on those results, but they may change. Before that, I'll probably be doing some more bonus parts for this game, or at least trying to. And maybe some bonus parts for Paper Mario if I get around to that. I'll also be trying to get out a review for Mischief Makers that covers my thoughts on the game in more depth with a little more professionalism. 
And when MLB 14 The Show comes out for the PS4, I'm kind of interested in making videos about that, but I don't know if I'll be able to based on the policies that are on the PlayStation 4. I mean, I'm going to be playing it a lot either way, even if I can't make videos of it, but I would really like to be able to make videos for Diamond Dynasty just because it's such an interesting mode that allows for a lot of creativity in your teams. Because you can create your own players and give them a whole bunch of different names. I think that's about it for what I have to say, really. I'll think on that throughout the rest of the credits, but if I have nothing to say, then that's the end of Mischief Makers. So I guess I'll see you next time. I'll leave the video running until the end of the credits even if I don't say anything. It's got some pretty decent music for the credits. this game is now. Well, I probably already said this, but I'll see you next time anyway.